a drift bloom in the back and you just know electrode wants to get in here but Mandiba says hold up let me get off this foul play first before you come in here and just roll over this thing obstagoon doesn't want the smoke parliament buildings that way What is going on everybody welcome back to the channel ox here with another video if you're new to the channel we do upload pokemon go content mostly related to pvp and if you're a returning subscriber like egg salad thank you for the support in today's video we are jumping back into the go battle league action took a couple days off for go fest hope everybody had a good time but for today's video we're taking a look at the great league remix we got a shoutcast today submitted to the channel by dan ottawa this is a fellow content creator on youtube i will have a link to his channel up here as well as in the description below definitely go check out his channel if you're looking for more pvp content really talented battler who puts out some very interesting teams like the one we see right here and this is the team that got dan ottawa to legend rank in season eight of pokemon go battle league in the great league remix this team consists of a frost last lead we got the super spicy you already know it's one of my favorites electrode operates a safe switch and man the buzz in the back now electrode is definitely a risky pick in this meta because it gets walled by a lot of things diggersby needle queen gonna have a lot of tough matchups there even you know the stun fisk however it does have a lot of positive matchups as well with all of the water types out there flying types so it's kind of a hit or miss pokemon but obviously he's able to make it work in order to reach a legend rank and we are definitely in for a treat with these battles if you guys enjoy this type of content please make sure you smash that like button it really helps the channel grow leave a comment in the comment section down below check out one of my other videos right here and without any further ado let's jump into the first battle right now all right so whenever i see dan ottawa i always think of this one comment i got once asking if Dan Ottawa was my brother from a parallel universe without the beanie and the answer is probably not but maybe I don't know we got Jellicent into Frost last year swapping out into the Electro here met by an Obscoon Electro here running Volt Switch as the fast move we got Discharge and Foul Play as the Charge moves taking that nice slash right here and notice we saw this in I believe it was the Love Cup where Electro was absolutely beasting it gets these moves very quickly with Volt Switch see Discharge coming through right here going to get the first shield and going to land this second discharge right here very spammy with these moves not going to KO the obscoon here and they can't really farm down with counts before the electro gets to the move so we are going to see the night slash come through definitely let this go down here and then probably come in with the frost last look to completely farm down with powder snow use one shield on the night slash and be absolutely loaded on energy for frost last here and even if jelson comes back in you will be able to hit it with a shadow ball so not a horrible situation to be in right here as the frost last going to farm down completely obviously we did get the boost right there but thankfully not able to get to another move jellison comes back in so definitely going to take this shadow ball right here will the opponent shield or let it go through shadow ball comes through as dealing heavy damage swaps out into the mandibuzz and here comes a hit on chan and mandibuzz is running snarl here so it's not the most dominant matchup but does have an energy lead here Air Lace, a horrible move, but dealing super effective damage. You see, even a Shadow Hitmonchan could survive a move as bad as Air Lace. Very, very weak move, especially coming from something like a Mandibuzz, but does provide solid coverage for this Pokemon. Going for another Air Lace, where you can see Mandibuzz is also very tanky itself. So Air Lace gets the shield from the Hitmonchan. And I think at this point, you will probably let this go down here and just once again come in with the Frost Last commit to the farm now they actually go for the power up punch which is a good play because you are going to increase that attack also gain a little bit of energy but does get farmed down here now frost last with the shield opponent doesn't want the smoke dan ottawa keeping them out of the parliament building down there in ottawa ontario canada let's hop into the next battle senator dan ottawa leading his frost last into a tropius right here very nice lead opponent swaps out to cast Worm, and here comes the electrode with that beautiful electric typing right here absolutely rolling over this cast form going for the discharge we do see the shield come up that probably would be enough to take out the cast form right there you can see water gun definitely that does add up here electrode it is a little bit glassy inside of that big ball and going for the discharge once again i don't expect the cast form to shield at this point because it will lose in the two shield so it does decide to let that go down the Tropius comes back in here and you can see Volt Switch still dealing decent damage here of course. Tropius is part flying so it is doing neutral damage at this point. This charge comes through and the Tropius can't really farm down here with Air Slash so it is going to decide to throw a move right here. Probably a Leaf Blade and that is going to take out the Electrode. So 
Frostlass comes back in, the instant swap into Empoleon here. Probably gonna see a Shadow Ball and then a swap out into the Mandibuzz. Seems like the standard play in this particular situation. Opponent lets it go through, holy smokes. So Mandibuzz comes in here and at this point the game is basically over. Not sure if Mandibuzz could farm down here. The opponent doesn't care, they don't want the smoke. They're gonna go join the other player in the parliament building down there in Ottawa. Dan Ottawa keeping all the people making a little assembly room there in the parliament building. We got Frostlass into a scavalier. And for all the non-Canadians, the parliament building is where the Prime Minister of Canada occupies his daily business, I guess. Mr. Trudeau. Um, yeah, anyways, look at this. Calling the acid spray bait right here. So get into the battles. I think that's a great call right there because oftentimes whenever I face the Scavalier, they do try to bait with the Acid Spray. Drill Run wouldn't KO, would do a lot of damage, but I do like that no shield right there. And you can see it gets the shield from the opponent. They actually take the Volt Switch there onto the Scavalier and they're gonna land the Drill Run here. Definitely gonna get a shield, but the, see they come with Nidal Queen here. So I'm, I'm not entirely sure why the opponent didn't just swap immediately into Nidal Queen because this is basically a hard wall to Electrode and you wouldn't have to have to have sacrificed your Scavalier there, you could have kept the energy, kept the health on it, just came with Nidal Queen, pretty much destroyed this Electrode here, even maybe exited with energy for this Frostlass, but it is what it is, the opponent going to throw the move here, could be an Earth Power potentially, no, it's only a Poison Fang, so good call there once again by Dan Ottawa going for the Avalanche here, should be enough to take, oh it's obviously gonna be enough, it's gonna be overkill action on the Nidal Queen, super effective damage, Obstacle comes in, gonna take this avalanche and obstacle actually has a pretty solid matchup against mandibuzz so this game isn't exactly over yet despite being up a shield but i mean with a shield mandibuzz should have a pretty good time here thing is the obstacle does have an energy lead so could be a little bit closer the opponent is going straight for the cross chops here i think at this point because you are down shields it kind of makes sense to go for the night slash and try to fish for the bait because i think at this point the only win condition is actually fishing for the bait Cross Chop does do a bit more damage, obviously, than Light Slash is going to be doing to the Mandibuzz. However, Cross Chop still isn't doing a lot. And yes, you do need to land Cross Chops to win this matchup, but you also need to get the boost at this point. So if they went for Night Slash, got the boost immediately on the first one, and then started Cross Chopping their way, they could have probably got this victory potentially here against Mandibuzz, but just going straight Cross Chop, not going to be enough against the tanky Mandibuzz, especially with the Shield Scavalier there in the back, catching the work off to a 3-0 start let's hop into the next battle we got frostlass into sir fetched this is an interesting match right here because sir fetched is going to be winning cmp tie here so there is a little bit of something because there does sneak in the extra powder snow there which is very nice going to shield up this night slash right here dealing super effective damage and the opponent gets the boost which is devastating right here so this game going both ways here sneaking extra moves seeing the extra fat seeing the boost come up and you can see another powder snow sneaking in so going to shield this up here land the avalanche which will possibly get the shield and then at this point frost ass would actually lose cmp so we may see a potential swap here into maybe mandibuzz and that is what happens a beautiful call there great read on the situation definitely would have lost cmp there banks that energy catches the leaf blade onto the man I think the opponent went for Leaf Blade there, expecting a potential swap, and maybe the Pokemon they bring in might be weak to Leaf Blade, so I like the opponent's play as well there. Seeing the Avalanche come through, Mandibuzz survives with one HP, which is going to be able to get off this foul play right here, doing a lot of damage to Frostlass. And now, remember, Frostlass does have a lot of energy stored, so it could potentially get to the move right here. Going for the Avalanche, is this enough to take out the Frostlass in this range? I believe it should be. Avalanche coming through, enough to take out the Frostlass. Sir Fetch coming back in. Farms down, but this is going to give Electrode a free Volt Switch, basically. Golbat in the back, holy smokes, you already know what time it is. Discharge coming through, not enough to KO, but you'll love to see it anyways. Boom, there it is. And here comes some more Volt Switches, taking out the goal that wasn't exactly a bang right there, but a nice little boom. And we're gonna hop into the next battle, Tuki Yubi, 1129. I believe Dan Otto is actually 4-0 right now in this set, and we got a Dragology in the lead. So a pretty solid lead right here for Frost Last Dragon Tail definitely does chunk though. Point swaps on, I like what Dan did here. Notice he did not throw the Avalanche immediately anticipating a potential swap and that means they get to land the Shadow Ball on the Jealous and opponent probably hoping they caught the Avalanche there. 
not the case. In fact, that was probably worthy of a bang right there, but it's okay. Ice Beam coming through. Mandibuzz gonna farm it down right here. And let's see, probably Dragology gonna come back in here. Yes, it is. Foul play going to be seen here from the Mandibuzz. Oh, it's a Stunfisk. Okay, so Stunfisk here. You're very happy to see this come out now because that could cause a lot of issues for Electrode. So you'd love to see it come out now. Keep it away from the Electrode at all costs. And then I believe it was a Jealousy lead, right? So no, Dragology lead. Actually, that's pretty bad for Electro too. So not the best situation here for Electro. We'll see how this game plays out. Foul play coming through and swaps out into the Frost last here. Going to shield up. And let's see what the opponent's gonna do here. Mud Bomb does come through. Here comes Dragology. Is it going to be an outrage? Going to let it go through. It's only an Aqua Tail. Can they get to the Avalanche? The opponent still has two shields. A little bit of lag right there. That's not good. Might have snuck in a couple of free Dragon Tails. Probably only one. But either way, that's going to hurt. Gets farmed now, which is not good. Comes in with the Electrode here. This is not the greatest situation to be in. Volt Switch is not going to get the job done here. Aqua Tail definitely hurt an Electro right there. Going for the Foul Play. Oh no, that's a brutal blow right there. Because probably not going to get the shield from the Dragology now at this point. And Overfarm is a little bit, Foul Play should be enough to KO, but that Unova Stunfisk in the back should be able to close. Oh, it does get the shield, okay. I like that play. Stunfisk comes in, trying to catch a move. Has to throw the Foul Play right here, but unfortunately is not going to be able to get to another move here. Has to throw here, because that Stunfisk basically at a mud shot. Dragology able to farm down. Goes four and one, still a very positive set. So let's hop into the second set of battles right here. Currently sitting at 29.53 it looks like. So potential 4-1 for Ledger Rank might get them there. 5-0 definitely. Frost last into Drift Bloom right here. A very positive lead. And we see a Shadow Machamp swap in here. So Shadow Machamp, like I've said in previous videos, this thing doesn't really care about typing unless it's like a Fairy or Confusion user, right? So coming in here, you can see it really applies a lot of pressure here. Building up to the Rock Slide. Frost Slide's probably definitely gonna have to shield. This has a lot of energy. Does call the Rock Slide, which is a huge call right there. Avalanche coming through. Might see the second shield come up here from the Shadow Machamp, which it does. And now at this point, you have the decisions to make. You could probably let the Frost Slash go down here, to be honest. They might even bait, to be honest, with Cross Chop, which they do. And now swaps out into the Electrode, but not going to be able to farm down because Volt Switch is a very slow move. So forced to burn the final shield right here, but does get a slight energy lead. Opponent comes in with a Regirock, and Regirock is actually pretty problematic for this team. In fact, you look at it, it's a nice lead. It's a flyer in the back, so Rock definitely would be an issue here. Regirock, Pro Pass, those kinds of Pokemon definitely could cause issues. Electro though, sort of holding its own right here against the Regirock, going for another Discharge right here. Almost takes it out. This Regirock is building a lot of energy here. I feel like it's way past the Stone Edge at this point. Stone Edge comes through, Electro survives. Super bulky ball right there. And the opponent comes back in with the Machamp. Mandibus comes in, able to farm down, get a little bit of free energy. Opponent doesn't want the smoke. Backs on out of there. Another person joining the waiting room in the parliament building. And we got Frostlass into Wigglytuff. So, I uh, definitely would prefer to see this in the lead than in the back. So, if you're going to see it anywhere, I believe Frostlass could actually get to two avalanches before the first move comes from the Wigglytuff. So, that's definitely going to apply a lot of shield pressure. But oftentimes, they take the first one and then swap out. In this case, that is what they do. Here comes the Hypno. Probably going to have to take a Shadow Ball right here. And then, you know, the Mandibuzz is going to come in here and have its way with this Hypno. So, Shadow Ball comes through, gets the shield, swap out into the Mandibuzz here. And probably take a move here, maybe a Thunder Punch, maybe an Ice Punch, maybe it's a Fire Punch. Definitely a Thunder Punch, that's going to get the Shield right there. Foul Play going to come through here. This is going to be Overkill on the Hypno. Actually, it's not Overkill because the Hypno apparently survives a Foul Play despite being a Shadow because Man Buzz attacks that is very low, but Man Buzz super tanky. Going to be able to farm down here, it's actually best case scenario. I actually didn't see if he undercharged it, but I don't think he did. Either way, a very low attack Pokemon Mandibuzz, so makes sense for Hypno to survive. It is relatively bulky, even though it's a battle. Wigglytuff coming in. Look at this. Wigglytuff actually not going to get him. This Wigglytuff has taken three charges at this point. Air Lace coming through. Gonna knock out the Wigglytuff. It's a Drift Bloom in the back, and you just know Electrode wants to get in here. But Mandibuzz says, hold up, let me get off this foul play first before you come in here and just roll over this thing. Actually, Mandibuzz is gonna stay in here and force the Drift Bloom to throw energy. Really like this play. Definitely don't need to shield right here. Icy Wing comes through, coming with the Electrode and basically 
bolt, switch, down, could actually, well, Shadow Ball would hurt, but no flex here from Dan Ottawa, gonna let that go through. Opponent lets it go down, takes that game. Let's hop into the next battle. We got Yami Kute here, trying to gatekeep Dan Ottawa in this match. We got Frost last into Victory Bell. Beautiful lead right here. Well, I mean, it's not actually beautiful because Victory Bell could win this, actually, I believe, if it shields once. I remember watching a wall over video, and actually, Victory Bell was pretty much owning these frost lasses here, but it definitely has to shield at least once here. So Avalanche comes through, gonna get the shield, and it looks like Frost Lass is going to get taken out here. So here comes the Man the Buzz, and you love to see it. Definitely gonna be an acid spray here, I'd imagine. Try to lower the defense. Yes, it is. And the opponent is going to allow the Man the Buzz to farm down here. So Man the Buzz with an energy lead, a shield advantage, but it does have its defense lower. And look at this, it's a stun fist. So this is a horrible situation to find yourself in right here because you cannot swap out into Electrode. Forced to stay in here despite your defense being lowered. So that should definitely tell the opponent that you must be weak to this you know Stun Stunfist because why else would you stay in with your defense lowered here unless your last Pokemon does not want to see. Opponent goes for Mud Bomb here trying to bait the shield right there and Dan Ottawa calls that brilliantly. And at this point, Discharge comes through. Definitely gonna shield this one right here. Going for another foul play, starting to apply pressure. I really don't think the opponent should be going for the Mud Bomb baits right there. It really does not make sense. But I guess there are some mind game things to keep in consideration there. Mandos might shield this, to be honest. Going to let it go through instead, come with the Electrode. This is going to be a very aggressive farm. The opponent swaps out though into Mandamus, and this gives the Electrode a win condition right here because Electrode, very positive matchup against the Mandamus. Here comes the Discharge, going to put a lot of pressure on this Mandamus. It does decide to burn its final shield. Will the Electrode shield here is the question. Let's it go through, saving that shield for a potential Mud Bomb on the stun fist here going for the discharge is this going to be enough to ko the man the bus discharge coming through bang there it is and a bolt switch sneaks through half the shield here and hope that you could farm this down and get to a move for that stun fist here it comes able to get to the foul play it's gonna be enough to take out the stun fist right here lucky that thing did not have a move takes that game very difficult situation to find yourself in in that particular matchup with the stun fist there in the back, causing issues for the electrode for sure. So very well played. We got Frost Lass into an op soon right here. This is not the greatest matchup for Frost Lass. And of course, the op soon gets the boost. It's just insult to injury. We can see Dan doing a very good job here of sneaking in the extra fast moves, gets an extra powder sword there. Does shield up the night slash. No boost from the op soon. You love to see it. Here comes the avalanche. And it seems like in this particular situation, Dan does like to stay in this match, but maybe he'll try to catch one of these Night Slashes onto the Man Buzz at some point down the line here. So another Night Slash coming through is going to get to this Avalanche. Actually, has decided to invest both shields already to this Frost Slash, so we might see the swap out into Man Buzz here. Avalanche coming through, they let that go through, and the opponent swaps out instead into the Frost Slash here, and Dan is actually doing a very risky play here, going for the Avalanche, but of course the opponent does kind of have to shield here. Yeah, that's that's a huge call because if they let that go through, Shadow Ball is going to KO. So the bait works successfully, saves a little bit of energy, comes in with the Electro here, catches the Shadow Ball, and here comes the foul play. Don't think this will be enough to knock out the Frost last year. Coming from the Electro, but we'll find out right now. Foul play, no, oh yeah. So that, that's the thing about Volt Switch, right? It's, it's so tilting sometimes because four turn move, it looks like they're gonna KO, but then they sneak in charge him at the last second but it's okay gold back comes in oh my goodness you kind of wish you had the electro there but this is still a very positive matchup and look at this gold about about to catch these icy hats from the frost last bang there it is one shot ko obstagoon doesn't want the smoke parliament buildings that way go line up i think there's like four people there sitting down waiting for the speech from senator dan and we got cry havoc in the next matchup Frost Lass into a gold bat right here. Beautiful lead, of course. Frost Lass going to put in work here. They swap in a Shadow Victory Bell into Frost Lass, which is interesting. I definitely want to come in here with the Mandos. This is complete wall right here. This is like the great wall of Mandibuzz going for the air lace. And the opponent shields, which makes absolutely, it makes no sense to shield there as the opponent. Uh, not really sure why the opponent would shield there because even if you shield, you're not going to win this match. Even if you shield twice, Victory Bell is not going to win this match against Mandibus. So it's kind of a waste of a shield, to be honest. You can see right here, Mandibus doesn't have to match shields. It wins that regardless how many shields Victory Bell 
wants to use. Now Golbat comes back in, it's gonna have to eat this foul play here. And it can't really farm down here unless it wants to invest another shield. So swaps out into Electrode here to preserve that. Of course, you do have Electrode and Frostless here. So swapping out makes a lot of sense. Obstoon going to come in right here. Going to take this Discharge from the Electrode doing a lot of damage right there. And probably going to see a Night Slash come through here from the Obstoon. Fishing for the boost, of course. But I mean, Night Slash, probably the more energy efficient move as well. And going for the Discharge here. I mean, it is the more energy efficient move, gets stabbed as well. And going to get farmed down here by the Obstoon, so that's a bit unfortunate, but of course, Dance has two shields. Mandibus comes back in. I like coming with Mandibus here, basically force the opponent to throw energy and then swap out into the Frost Slash here. Golbat comes back in. This looks like it's going to be a two shield flex here from Senator Dan. And yes, oh, well, maybe it won't. Oh, gonna shield up here. I think Frost Ice could probably survive from this range, but Dan is not about that flexing. He's about the wins. He's about hitting that legend rank. No playing around right here. And look at this. Is it enough to get to legend? We're about to find out. So I guess everybody knows he is going to reach legend because it says it in the title already. But a huge shout out to Dan Ottawa for those battles. Once again, go check out his channel on YouTube. Link in the description below. Very talented battler as we saw in these battles. And a huge congratulations once again on reaching legend rank for season eight. So those were some very entertaining battles featuring a big ball of spice in the form of Electrode. You guys know I love the Electrode content, so very happy to see this submission in my inbox. If you guys enjoy this type of content, please consider leaving a like, commenting, subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.